Well, evening, everybody, and welcome to the 10th week of Tuesday Night Quiz here in lockdown. Uh, same format as all the other weeks. It's five rounds, uh, 10 questions per round, and then there'll be a bonus question in each round as well. So hopefully you might have read the instructions as we've gone along there. Um, so I think without further ado, we'll just get on with the quiz proper. As I say, here's the instructions. Just have a quick little read over. The one thing I will do now, though, is switch off the live chat on the stream. Uh, just so nobody puts any answers or anything on, but I will switch it on during the break in the middle. There's a five minute break after the first three rounds. Uh, so I'll just take it off just now and then we'll put it on later. Uh, feel free to put your comments on about scores, etc. How you're getting on. A usual good score at the halfway mark is anything over 25, 30. Anything above 50 at the end is a very, very good score. Uh, so that's the rules, all quite simple. We'll be a minute's uh, time at the end of each round as well, just for final checking. Like it says there, after the first three rounds, we'll mark those three, then have a five-minute break, and then there'll be two more rounds after that break. It takes about an hour, so hopefully that doesn't eat up too much of your Tuesday evening. So I think without further ado, let's just get straight in with round one. And round one this week is food and drink. And the first question in food and drink... How is the combination of star anise, pepper, cinnamon, cloves and fennel better known? How is the combination of star anise, pepper, cinnamon, cloves and fennel better known? So we'll go through quite quick fire. Like I say, there is a minute at the end of each round just for uh, extra thinking time, just in case you're unsure on anything. So if you're not sure on a question, just write a little note on your paper. You can always come back to it in that minute. But we'll, uh, we'll plod on through, try and keep to that hour's time for the whole quiz. Question two in food and drink is, whose restaurant would you be visiting if you dined at the City Brasserie in Norwich? Whose restaurant would you be visiting if you dined at the City Brasserie in Norwich? And question three in food and drink. From which fruit is the liqueur Calvados made? From what fruit is the liqueur Calvados made? And move on, we'll look at question four. And it is, how many standard wine bottles make up a Nebuchadnezzar? How many standard wine bottles make up a Nebuchadnezzar? And then we come on to question five. Question five. Which hot sauce and brand name is closely associated with the McHilney Company? Which hot sauce and brand name is closely associated with the McHilney Company? So again, if you're unsure on any of these, just write a little note in the, in the margin. You can always come back to them at the minutes thinking time, which is at the end of, of all the rounds. And also in each round, you'll be aware of this if you played it before, but uh, after question five, there's always a bonus question in each round, which is worth two points when it comes to marking. And question, the bonus questions are always related in some way to information in question five. So the bonus question for the food and drink round this week is... What state of America do this company make this product in? What state of America do this company make this product in? So 
So again, when it comes to the marking, there's two points for this. So hence there's 12 points in each round, a total of 60 for the whole quiz, uh, should you be lucky. But we go back to the single point questions again, and question six, just for one point when it comes to marking. Of which vegetable are Globe and Jerusalem varieties? Of which vegetable are Globe and Jerusalem varieties? And then question seven in food and drink. Who was the Roman god of wine? Who was the Roman god of wine? Just three more questions in the food and drink round. Question eight. What kind of vegetable are Kelvedon Wonder, Little Marvel and Hurst Greenshaft? What kind of vegetable are Kelvedon Wonder, Little Marvel and Hurst Greenshaft? So two more questions in the first round, food and drink. So question nine is, which vegetable is served with eggs Florentine? Which vegetable is served with eggs Florentine? And that takes us nicely to the last question in the first round, question 10, which is, what gives Windsor Red cheese its colour and flavour? What gives Windsor Red cheese its colour and flavour? So that brings us to the end of round one. Like I say, at the end of each round, we've got a minute just to finalise any answers that you're unsure of. Um, so that'll go quite quickly. So if you've written any notes or anything you're not too sure on, we'll have a minute now before we get on to round two. So I'll pop a minute on the clock, starting now.
Okay, so that's a minute's thinking time there for the first round, food and drink. Like I say, there's a minute's thinking time at the end of all the rounds, so do take notes if you're unsure on any of the answers. So we'll move quickly on to round two, and round two this week is art and literature. And the first question in the art and literature round is, in fiction, who lived in the stables at Birtwick Hall? In fiction, who lived in the stables at Birtwick Hall? And then question two in art and literature is Lady de Winter is a villainess in which famous novel? Lady de Winter is a villainess in which famous novel? And as ever, when it comes to marking questions, uh, we always like to have it so that spellings aren't necessarily taken into account that importantly. As long as you think someone's got the answer right, if you are marking someone else's, then give them the points. Question three in Art and Literature is, Airstrip One is the new name for Britain in which book? Airstrip One is the new name for Britain in which book? And question four in Art and Literature. Philip Pirrip is the central character in which famous novel? Philip Pirrip is the central character in which famous novel? And then we'll move on to question five now. Remember at question five, we'll have a bonus question after it again that's related in some way to the information in question five. And question five in the art and literature round, remember just one point for these when it comes to marking. Which Shakespearean characters cook with nose of Turk and Tartar's lips? Which Shakespearean characters cook with nose of Turk and Tartar's lips? And that brings us on to the bonus question in the art and literature round. Again, just as a reminder, when it comes to marking these, they are worth two points. And the bonus question is, in which century was Shakespeare born? In which century was Shakespeare born? No extra points for the exact year, just the century. And again two points when it comes to marking if you get the century correct.
And that takes us back again to the single point questions. Question six, just a single point when it comes to marking. Holden Coalfield is the central character of which novel? Holden Coalfield is the central character of which novel? And then we'll go to question seven in Art and Literature. And question seven is, how is the painting La Gioconda also known as? How is the painting La Gioconda also known as? Question eight. No dumbing down on the literature here. What was the name of the family who Paddington Bear lived with? What was the name of the family who Paddington Bear lived with? Going along quite quickly here, which is good, but there is a minute at the end of the round, remember, as well. So if you do put notes in the side, you can always come back to them in that minute, which goes quite quickly, but uh, hopefully gives that a little bit of time just to ensure that you have got an answer for every question. You may as well put something in rather than leaving it blank. Question nine in Art and Literature. What is the second book of the Old Testament called? What is the second book of the Old Testament called? And that takes us to the last question in Art and Literature, question 10, which is, which British Prime Minister was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature? Which British Prime Minister was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature? So that's the end of round two. Again, at the end of this round, there's a minute's thinking time now just to write down any answers or any blanks that you have, just to, uh, if you weren't sure, but we'll pop a minute on the clock. Starting now, then we'll come back for the third round before we have marking of those first three rounds and a five minute break. So a minute on the clock, starting now. Okay, so that's the minute's time thinking there for the uh, second round, and we'll go quickly into round three, which is the final one before we mark those first three rounds, 
And then after that, we'll have a little uh, five minute break. We'll also pop the live chat up as well for you to write your scores on, any comments, etc. Uh, but we'll go straight into round three. Round three is a picture round again this week. And this week it is sporting trophies. Sporting trophies. Simply recognise the sporting trophy from the picture. Now, some of them might have names, etc. Um, so it's either the name or what the, uh, the sport it's awarded for, what um, discipline it's awarded for, either or. So the first trophy in round three is... Simply name that trophy. So like I say, some trophies might have a commemorative name as well as the competition that they're actually played for. Uh, predominantly it's the competition we're after, but if you do know the name of the trophy as well, then all the better, but they are just single point questions. So that's question one there. And question two. Simply name that sporting trophy. Now obviously there is a minute's thinking time at the end of this round as well. It's slightly trickier to write any notes Obviously, I won't be going through the round again or showing the pictures again. So if you're unsure, just try and write as much information as you can down about each picture. Always worth putting a guess in, though, rather than leaving something blank. And we're going to question three in Sporting Trophies. The question again is, name that trophy. And we move on to question four. Simple question again, name that trophy. And that brings us on to question five in the Sporting Trophies round. Again, there'll be a bonus question after question five that is in some way related to the info in question five. So question five, first part for one point, name that trophy. And that brings us on to the bonus question that's related to question five of this round. Again, just as a reminder, it's two points for this, if you get it right, when it comes to marking. And the bonus question is, what decade was this trophy first presented? In what decade was this trophy first presented? As ever, no extra bonus points if you get the exact year, just the decade we're looking for. Two points for that when it comes to marking as well, giving you the possibility of 12 points in each of the five rounds. Back to the single point questions though, and in Sporting Trophies, question six for one point, name that trophy.
And moving on, four to go, question seven in Sporting Trophies. Simple question, just name that trophy. Moving on to question eight. One simple question again, just name that trophy. Then we move on, just two more to go in the trophies round. Question nine is simply name that trophy. And that brings us to the last question in the Sporting Trophies round. Question 10, again, just simply name that trophy. So as for the previous rounds, we'll have a minute's thinking time now just to finalise any answers, fill in any blanks that you might have there. Uh, and then once we do, we'll come back and then we'll mark the first three rounds, get an idea of the score at the, uh, the halfway mark before we have a five minute break for you to stretch your legs, go and grab a drink, let the dog out, whatever you need to do. But like I say, we'll just have a minute now just to finalise the answers uh, for the round three, sporting trophies, but also any of the answers you might not have been sure on for uh, rounds one and two. As I say, we'll be marking rounds one, two and three when we come back after this minute. Minute on the clock, starting now. Okay, so that's the final minute's thinking time uh, for you to do anything you were unsure of in the first three rounds. So what we'll do now is uh, mark these first three rounds before we have a five minute break. So I'm going to go quickly through. I'm not going to put the questions up on screen at all. I'll just read them out quickly and go through the answers. So get your pens and papers ready. Like I say, spellings and things, let's be lenient on. And then keep an idea of your scores. And then when the live chat's open during the five minute break, uh, feel free to keep us posted. Let's see who's doing well, who's in the lead. So we'll go back to round one. Round one, food and drink. Question one. How is the combination of star anise, pepper, cinnamon, cloves and fennel better known? Well, that's better known as five spice. Five spice. 
Question two, whose restaurant would you be visiting if you dined at the City Brasserie in Norwich? Uh, Norwich was a clue there. It's Delia Smith. Delia Smith's restaurant. Question three, from what fruits is the liqueur Calvados made? It is made from apples. Apples. Question four, how many standard wine bottles make up a Nebuchadnezzar? And Nebuchadnezzar is 20 bottles, 20 bottles, 20 standard 750ml bottles. It's 15 litres, but it's the equivalent of 20 bottles. Question five was the which hot sauce, brown brand name, is closely associated with the McElhenney Company? That is Tabasco, Tabasco sauce. And then the bonus question, which is related to question five, and again, it's two points for these bonus questions when it comes to marking. What state of America does this company make Tabasco in? They make it in Louisiana. In Louisiana. Back to the single point questions again. Question six. Of which vegetable are Globe and Jerusalem varieties? Well, they are both varieties of artichoke. Artichoke. Question seven. Who was the Roman god of wine? Well, that was Bacchus. Bacchus was the Roman god of wine. Question eight. What kind of vegetable are Kelvedon Wonder, Little Marvel and Hurst Green Shaft? Well, they are all types of pea. All types of pea. Question nine. Which vegetable is served with eggs florentine? That vegetable would be spinach. Spinach is served with eggs florentine. And then the last question. Question ten in food and drink. What gives Windsor red cheese its colour and flavour? That is red wine. Red wine gives Windsor red cheese its colour and flavour. So I should have um, all marked there. That should be out of 12 points maximum. Just keep a little note as we go along. We'll mark these first three rounds. Then I'll put the live chat open uh, during the five-minute break if you want to pop down the total of your scores for those first three rounds. But we're going to round two, which was art and literature. Question one was, in fiction, who lived in the stables at Birtwick Hall? Well, that was Black Beauty who lived in those stables. Question two, Lady the Winter is a villainess in which novel? Well, that is... The Three Musketeers. Lady de Winter is a villainess in The Three Musketeers. Question three. Airstrip One is the new name for Britain in which book? Well, that's in 1984. 1984. Question four. Philip Pirrip is the central character in which famous novel? That novel is Great Expectations. Great Expectations. Charles Dickens' is Great Expectations. Question five, which Shakespearean characters cook with Nose of Turk and Tartar's Lips? Well, that's the three witches. The three witches in Macbeth, either or. The three witches in Macbeth. Then the bonus question that's related to question five. And again, remember, it's two points for these bonus questions when we're marking now. In which century was Shakespeare born? Well, he was born in the 16th century. 16th. He was born in 1565, the 16th century. Back to the single points now. Question six. Holden Coalfield is the central character of which novel? That is Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye. Question seven. How is the painting La Gioconda also known? Well, it's more widely known as The Mona Lisa. La Gioconda is The Mona Lisa. Question eight. What was the name of the family who Paddington Bear lived with? Well, that family was The Browns. The Browns. Question nine, what is the second book of the Old Testament called? The second book is Exodus. Exodus is the second book. Question ten, which British Prime Minister was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature? Well, that was Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. So again, that brings us to the end of the second round. Twelve points available in that, so if you keep the total totting up as we go along but we'll go straight into the marking for question three. I'll just go through these trophies. No questions to read out, no pictures to show. The first trophy there was the Ryder Cup, Ryder Cup in golf. The second trophy was the America's Cup, the America's Cup. Question three, possibly the easiest one there, that is the FA Cup, the Football FA Cup. Question four, well, that was the Wimbledon Ladies Singles Trophy. Wimbledon Ladies Singles Trophy, that plate. Question five, small one there, that's simply the ashes, the ashes. And the bonus question that's related to the ashes, what decade was this trophy first presented? Well, it was first presented in the 1880s. In 1882, it was first presented in the 1880s. 
Two points if you got that. Uh, but back to question six, which is just for one point. That trophy was the Snooker World Championship. The Snooker World Championship. Question seven, the trophy in there was the C Calcutta Cup. The Calcutta Cup uh, in rugby between England and Scotland. That's first uh, played for in 1879, the Calcutta Cup. Question eight is the Davis Cup. Tennis is the Davis Cup. Spain current champions of that. Question nine, it's the Rugby World Cup trophy, also known as the Webb Ellis Trophy, but it's the Rugby World Cup or Webb Ellis Trophy. And then the final trophy there is the Super Bowl trophy. Super Bowl trophy, and again, that's known as the Vince Lombardi trophy. But it's the Super Bowl trophy or the Vince Lombardi trophy. So I'll pop the live chat back up now. We're going to have a five-minute break just so you can go and stretch your legs, uh, get yourself a drink, let the dog out, whatever you need to do. But as I say, I'll pop the live chat on if you want to pop down what scores you got. Possible 36 points for the first three rounds. Uh, so any score above 25, 30 is an, a very, very good score. So we'll see what people have got. But we'll put five minutes on the clock now, leave the live chat, and then the following two rounds will come after that before we do final marking and see what the top score is. But I'll pop five minutes on the clock now and see you in a bit.
Okay, so that's a five minute break over there. Hopefully that's enough time for you to uh, got a drink, do what you needed to do. Uh, I can see a few good scores coming in so far, which is nice. Anything above 25, I think it's a great score, which sort of leads to anything above 40, 45, being a good score after the five rounds. Um, so I've switched off the live chat now, just for these last two rounds. Same format as before, well, after each round there'll be a minute's thinking time, and then after the, the remaining two, we'll mark those two rounds and get an idea of final scores. Leave the live chat on for a little bit for you to pop your scores and any comments on. But straight in with round four, and round four this week is simply called Man. Now, all the answers in this round all begin with the letters M-A-N. That's all it means, that all the answers begin with the letters M-A-N. So, on to question one. And the first question is, what is the correct name for your lower jawbone? What is the correct name for your lower jawbone? So as before, there's a minute's thinking time at the end of each round, so if you are unsure on any of these, do write a little note on the side of your paper. You can always come back to them in that minute's thinking time. We'll keep, uh, keep the pace up here. It's heading to be about an hour for the quiz, like we said, so that's good. So we'll move on with question two. What man is a type of pea, the pod of which is also eaten? What man is a type of pea, the pod of which is also eaten? And to keep the pace along, we'll move on to question three. What is the name of a literary or musical composition written with the hand as opposed to a printed copy? What is the name of a literary or musical composition written with the hand as opposed to a printed copy? And move on. Question four in the man round. What is the name of the first track released by Nelly Furtado from her best-selling album Loose in 2006? The name of the first track released by Nelly Furtado from her best-selling album Loose in 2006. And then we'll go to question five. Remember, there's a bonus question after question five again. But the one point question, question five, what is the surname of the singer who was originally born Barry Allen Pincus? What is the surname of the singer who was originally born Barry Allen Pincus? And then the bonus question related to question five. For two points again, when we come to mark these, what decade was this singer born in? What decade was this singer born in? The singer in question five, what decade were they born in? And again, just a reminder, two points for these bonus questions when it comes to marking. So we'll move on quite quickly. Back to the single point questions again. Question six in the round four. 
What is the name of an official of the Chinese Empire and also a type of fruit? What is the name of an official of the Chinese Empire and also a type of fruit? To question seven. In 1974, the legendary footballer Dennis Law scored an amazing backheeled goal in the last game of the season for which English football club? 1974, Dennis Law scored a backheeled goal, last game of the season for which English football club? Uh, three more questions to go in the fourth round. Question eight. What name is given to Japanese graphic novels typically intended for adults and characterised by highly stylized art? What name is given to Japanese graphic novels typically intended for adults characterised by highly stylized art? And two questions to go in the fourth round. Question nine is, what is the name of the song written in 1969 by Jimmy Cliff and later covered by UB40 in 1983 and Annie Lennox in 2008? What's the name of the song written in 1969 by Jimmy Cliff and later covered by UB40 in 1983 and Annie Lennox in 2008? Again, there is a minute's thinking time at the end of this round as well, so if you're unsure of that, just write a note down. But we'll go on quickly to question 10, the last question in the round, which is, who got married to the American singer Ryan Adams in 2009? Who got married to the American singer Ryan Adams in 2009? So that brings us to the again to the end of the fourth round. As for the previous rounds, I have a quick minute's thinking time now just to finalise any answers before we go on to the fifth and final round of the quiz. But I'll pop a minute on the clock starting now.
So that's the end of that minute's thinking time, and just a time to write down any answers you're unsure of, or to fill in any blanks. Uh, but now that leads us nicely into the fifth and final round. As ever, round five is general knowledge. Ten more questions to go, then we'll mark the final two rounds, get an idea of scores, and open up the live chat. But the first question in general knowledge is... The British farthing was in circulation for 100 years and ceased to be legal tender in 1960. But from 1937 onwards, it featured the image of which type of bird? From 1937 onwards, it featured the image of what type of bird? Moving on, just to try and keep to speed, question two in general knowledge is A haiku is a very short form of Japanese what? A haiku is a very short form of Japanese what? And question three in general knowledge is Which two letters represent the postal code area of Edinburgh? Which two letters represent the postal code area of Edinburgh? That takes us on to question four, which is, who was the Beatles' manager from 1961 until his death in 1967? Who was the Beatles' manager from 1961 until his death in 1967? takes us on to question five. Single point question again, question five. How many children were in the title of the 1990s BBC TV sitcom that followed the life of the Porters? How many children were in the title of the 1990s BBC TV sitcom that followed the lives of the Porters? And the final bonus question, which uh, for two points again when it comes to marking, related to that question, is... Let's look, name either of the actors who played the husband, wife, Bill and Ben in this series. Name either of the actors who played the husband and wife, Bill and Ben, in this series. Either of those actors' names. Two points for either of them. No bonus points if you get both. A little bit of thinking time on that one, it's quite a difficult one. But as ever, we do have a minute at the end of this round before the final marking. So we'll move on to question six, which again is a single point question. What is the main occupation of Lisa Armstrong, former wife of Ant McPartland? 
What is the main occupation of Lisa Armstrong, former wife of Ant McPartland? Four more questions to go in the quiz. So question seven. The 1988 film Gorillas in the Mist tells the true story of Diane Fossey's work with mountain gorillas in which country? The 1988 film Gorillas in the Mist tells the true story of Diane Fossey's work with mountain gorillas in which country? Just three more questions to go. Question eight. Which American rock band has the signature songs Free Bird and Sweet Home Alabama? Which American rock band has the signature songs Free Bird and Sweet Home Alabama? And two, two more questions to go in the quiz. So question nine. In the Second World War, what was the German equivalent of the RAF? In the Second World War, what was the German equivalent of the RAF? And that brings us to the last question of the quiz, question 10. And question 10 this week is, Brisbane is the capital of which Australian state? Brisbane is the capital of which Australian state? So that brings us to the end of the fifth round, general knowledge, and also the end of the quiz. So we'll pop a minute on the clock now just for final uh, answers, a final um, filling in any blanks for rounds four and five. Then we'll come back and mark them, open up the live chat for a little bit and see how everyone's got on. But a minute on the clock now just for any final adjustments.
Okay, so that's the end of the time to make any adjustments, any final answers. So we'll go now through the marking for the last two rounds to see how people have got on, and then I'll leave the live chat open for a little bit to write down your final scores. So round four, that was the man round. All the answers begin with the letters M-A-N. And the first one, what is the correct name for your lower jawbone? That is the mandible. Mandible. Question two, what man is a type of pea, the pod of which is also eaten? Well, that is a mange two. Mange two. Question three, what is the name of a literary or musical composition written with hand as opposed to a printed copy? That is a manuscript. Manuscript. Question four, what is the name of the first track released by Nelly Furtado from a best-selling album Loose in 2006? That was Man Eater, Man Eater. Question five, what is the surname of the singer who was originally born Barry Allen Pincus? Well, that is the, the name of Barry Manilow, Barry Manilow. Bonus question related to that, what decade was this singer born in? What decade was Barry Manilow born in? He was born in the 1940s, born in 1943, in the 1940s. Question six, the single point questions. Again, what is the name of an official of the Chinese Empire and also a type of fruit? Well, that's a mandarin, mandarin. Just a single point for that one as well, question six. Question seven, in 1974, the footballer Dennis Law scored an amazing backheel goal in the last game of the season for which club? That club was Manchester City, Manchester City. Question eight. What name is given to the Japanese graphic novels typically intended for adults, characterised by highly stylized art? They are manga, manga. Question nine. What is the name of the song written by Jimmy Cliff in 1969, later covered by UB40 and Annie Lennox? That is Many Rivers to Cross, Many Rivers to Cross. And question ten in that round was who got married to the American singer Ryan Adams in 2009? Well, that was... Mandy Moore, Mandy Moore. Uh, they got married in 2009 and uh, married until 2016, 2016. That takes us to the last round for marking, uh, general knowledge, round five. First question, British Farthing uh, was in circulation for 100 years. From 1937 onwards, it featured the image of what bird? That is the wren. It features the image of the wren. Question two, a haiku is a very short form of Japanese poetry. Haiku is Japanese poetry, usually three phrases made up of 17 syllables. Question three, which two letters represent the postal code of Edinburgh? That is the letters E and H, E, H. Question four, who was the Beatles manager from 1961 until his death in 1967? That is Brian Epstein, Brian Epstein. Question five. How many children were in the title of the BBC TV sitcom in the 90s that followed the lives of the porters? Well, that was 2.4 children. 2.4 children. And the bonus question for two points related to that. Name either of the actors who played husband and wife Bill and Ben in this series. Well, the two actors were Gary Olson and Belinda Lang. Gary Olson and Belinda Lang. Two points if you've got that. Two points if you've got either of them, that is. Question six, back to the single point questions. What is the main occupation of Lisa Armstrong, formula, former wife of Ant McPartland? Well, she's a makeup artist, makeup expert, artist. Uh, they are married for 11 years before they divorced in 2018. Question seven, the 1988 film Gorillas in the Mist tells the true story of Diane Fossey's work with mountain gorillas in Rwanda. The country we're after was Rwanda. Question eight, which American rock band has the signature songs Freebird and Sweet Home Alabama? That is Leonard Skinnerd. Leonard Skinnerd. And again, as ever, spelling not that important. If it looks like Leonard Skinnerd, it is Leonard Skinnerd. Question nine, in the Second World War, what was the German equivalent of the RAF? Well, the equivalent was the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe. And again, on that one, spelling possibly not that important. And that brings us to the final question in general knowledge and the quiz. Brisbane is the capital of which Australian state? Well, it is the capital of Queensland. It's the capital of Queensland. 
So that brings us to the end of the quiz. Uh, that's five rounds down, 12 points per round, so there should be a maximum of 60 points available. What I'll do now is I'll leave the live chat open, and uh, just for you to put some comments on and pop your scores live, and I'll leave it on for five, sort of five or so minutes. Do write down any comments, etc. as well. It's always good to see how people have done. Any scores near to 45 or 50 are good scores, though. But uh, do put your comments on. Uh, this quiz will be there on, on Tuesday again next week, but if you want any more information about up-and-coming quizzes as well, then do follow me here on YouTube or have a look for me on Twitter. Uh, the details are there below. But for the moment, I'll leave the live chat up and I'll see you next Tuesday. All the best.